What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Daniel and welcome back to our video. Today I'll be taking a look at the entry list for the 2024 Cookout 400 at Martinsville Speedway. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. We're going to start and talk about the one car for Trackhouse Racing. This will once again be driven by Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain is off to solid start in 2024, but it's kind of struggled on the shorter ovals so far this year. And Ross Chastain is also known at Marsville as the one who did the Hail Mella move. He'll be looking to have a really good performance this weekend at Marsville as he'll be looking to get his first victory of 2024. We'll see if he can get it done this weekend at Martinsville. Up next, up with the two car for Team Penske. This is once again be driven by Austin Cinder. Austin Cinder has had a pretty okay start to 2024, but also has struggled the last couple weeks as well. It seems like Team Penske has been a little bit off the pace. Luckily for Cinder, he's had some good performances here. Maybe that could lead him having a really strong run with Penske this weekend. Up next, how about the three car for Richard Childress Racing? This one once again be driven by Austin Dillon. It has been an abysmal start for Austin Dillon so far in 2024. I believe he's still looking for his first top 10 finish in race 8 of this season. Austin Dillon, though, has been okay at, at Martinsville. I don't think he's going to have a good chance at contending for the win, but maybe Austin Dillon could have a solid and good performance this weekend at Martinsville International Raceway. Up next, how about the four car for Stuart Haas Racing? This will once again be driven by Josh Berry. Josh Berry has historically been really good at Martinsville throughout his career. His first NASCAR top tier win came at Martinsville. I think that Josh Berry might be a sleeper pick to win because we know the SHR cars have been really strong the last couple years at that track, and Josh Berry is a really good short track racer. I think Josh Berry will have a really great chance and opportunity. It wouldn't surprise or shock if he does get his first win of 2024. Up next, how about the five car for Hendrick Motorsports? This one's going to be driven by Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson won the last spring race here, and he's been pretty solid so far in 2024. I do expect that Kyle Larson will have some pretty good pace and really strong speed in that five car this weekend. We know they've had some good pace so far this year, as Kyle Larson looks to get his second victory of 2024 this weekend at Martinsville International Raceway. Up next, how about the six car for RFK Racing? This will once again be driven by Brad Keselowski. Brad Keselowski has been off to solid performance so far in 2024, but has not been as good as he was in 2023 and near the end of the season. I expect Brad Keselowski, though, to be really good. He's won a Marsville a couple times in, a, in his Cup Series career, and I certainly do expect that Brad Keselowski and his six team are going to be fast. I think he'll have a good chance and opportunity to potentially get win number one of 2024 this weekend. Up next, how about the seven car for Spire Motorsports? This will once again be driven by Corey LaJoy. Corey LaJoy had a business performance this past week in Richmond, finishing in last. After a great start at the 2024, it's been a little bit of a downward spiral for this organization and team. They need to turn the corner. Luckily for Corey LaJoy, he's been pretty solid at this racetrack in the past. Hopefully that could lead to Corey LaJoy having a good performance this weekend at Martinsville. Up next, how about the A car for Richard Childress Racing? This will once again be driven by Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch historically has been pretty solid at Martinsville Speedway, but Richard Childress Racing's short track program so far has been very atrocious in 2024. And probably ever since about Atlanta and Vegas, this A team's been struggling a little bit. They need to turn the corner, and I really don't think it's going to happen, considering that Kyle Busch and the A team have struggled quite a bit here the last year or so. I think Kyle Busch will not have a good run likely this weekend at Martinsville. Up next, how about the nine car for Hendrick Motorsports? This will once again be driven by Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott finally got his first top five of the 2024 season this past weekend at Richmond, and he's had some good momentum and some good pace as of recently. And historically, Chase Elliott has been pretty faster. While only having one win in his Cup Series career up to this point at this track, we certainly know that Chase Elliott is a very good short track racer. I do expect that Chase Elliott could have a very strong and good performance this weekend at Martinsville. Up next, how about the 10 car for Stuart Haas Racing? This will once again be driven by Noah Gregson. Noah Gregson's been pretty solid so far in 2024. He's had some top 10 and top 15 performances, and he's been historically pretty good at Marzel throughout his NASCAR career. I expect Noah Grayson to contend as 10 car nearly won the last time we were here at Marzel. I think that Noah Grayson could have a really good chance and a strong opportunity to win if he can be up front at the end of the race. 
Up next, how about the 11 car for Joe Gibbs Racing? This will once again be driven by Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin's coming off of winning last week in Richmond and winning two of the last three races. And Denny Hamlin historically has been amazing at Martinsville. He's led a lot of laps and has been up front pretty consistently. I think that Denny Hamlin will be a force to be reckoned with this weekend. That 11 team has been really strong on the short track so far. I think Denny Hamlin will be a threat to win in that 11 car this weekend at Martinsville. Up next, how about the 12th car for Team Penske? This will once again be driven by Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney did not have a good performance at Richmond. Luckily for him, Ryan Blaney is really good at Marnesville. He won the last time we were here at Marnesville, as a matter of fact, and it propelled him into the Championship 4, where he went on to win the championship. I think that Ryan Blaney is going to be a threat to win. We've seen the speed of the 12th car at this track. I think he will have a great chance and opportunity, and he might finally be able to get win number one of the 2024 season. This weekend at Martinsville. Up next, how about the 14 car for Stuart Haas Racing? This will once again be driven by Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe has been pretty solid at Martinsville International Raceway. The 14 car almost led the most laps in the spring race here, and he was up front pretty consistently in the fall race as well. I think Chase Briscoe could be a solid underdog pick to go to victory, but I do think the 14 team will have some decent pace and speed this weekend at Martinsville International Speedway with the 14 organization. Up next, how about the 15 car for Rick Ware Racing? This will once again be driven by Kaz Grala. Kaz Grala has been off to a pretty okay start so far in 2024 and has had some top 25 and top 30 performances. Kaz has been okay at Marzell, but not spectacular throughout his career. I do think Kaz Grala might have a chance for a top 30, but that's probably about it considering I do think that the Rick Ware Racing cars are going to struggle just a little bit this weekend. He might prove me wrong, but I'm not expecting much from the SIP 15 team. Up next, up at the 16 car for Colleg Racing. This week, it'll be driven by Josh Williams, who will make his second points paint start of the 2024 season. Josh Williams has is a really good short track racer, and he did, I believe, finish in the top 10 the last time we were there for the Xfinity Series, but he needs a shot in the arm. He has struggled in the select cup races he had so far, and I'm worried that he's not going to run good because the short track program for the call cars and cup have not been great. But if there's anyone that can adapt to that, it is definitely a driver like Josh Williams, who, like I said, will make his second start of the season. Up next, how about the 17 car for RFK Racing? This will once again be driven by Chris Busher. Chris Busher's off to a really solid start in 2024. He has finished in the top 10, I believe, in all but one race so far this year, and the consistency has absolutely been there. I think that Chris Busher could be a sleeper pick to win. The 17 car has been really having some good pace, and we've seen the speed from RK at this track in the past. I think that Chris Busher could definitely be someone to watch out for this weekend. At Martins International Raceway, still looking for his first win. Up next, up in the 19 car for Joe Gibbs Racing. This will once again be driven by Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex Jr. should have won last week at Richmond. He had the best car all night and has shown a lot of great pace so far, as I believe right now he is still the regular season points leader. I do expect that Martin Truex Jr. will be a serious threat and contender for the victory. The Joe Gibbs cars have been extremely quick, and Martin Truex Jr. has scored two or three wins so far up to this point at this track. I think MTJ will be a force to be reckoned with this weekend at Martinsville. Up next, how about the 20 car for Joe Gibbs Racing? This will once again be driven by Christopher Bell. Christopher Bell has been off to a really solid start this year, but he's also made a lot of mistakes on pit road. Luckily for him, Christopher Bell's ran good at this track. He won this track in the fall race in 2022, and I do expect that that 20 car is going to have some overall good pace and good speed this weekend at Marsville. I think Christopher Bell will absolutely be a force to be reckoned with and might get his second victory of 2024. Up next, how about the 21 car for the Wood Brothers? This will once again be driven by Harrison Burton. Harrison Burton's been off to a horrendous start in 2024. He only has one top 25 finish so far through the first seven races, and Rhino has the worst position to owner's points at 35th currently at the moment. This team needs to turn the corner really, really quickly. I'm not sure if it's going to happen. They need to start doing better if they're going to contend. And Harrison Burton's been okay at this track, but I'm not expecting him to set the world on fire. He needs to turn the corner if he's going to keep that seat long term. Up next, how about the 22 car for Team Penske? This will once again be driven by Joey Logano. Joey Logano finally had a great performance last weekend at Richmond, and luckily for him, he is fantastic at Martinsville. I do believe that we are going to see Joey Logano have another great performance. Team Penske has been extremely strong at this racetrack, and I do believe that Joey Logano in the 22 team 
are going to do their best to show up so they can absolutely contend. I expect Joey Logano to be a force to be reckoned with and might finally get his first win in over a year and might get Ford's first win in nearly eight or nine weeks. Up next, how about the 23 car for 2311 Racing? This will once again be driven by Bubba Walls. Bubba Walls had a great run going at Richmond until the end when he got into Kyle Larson at the end of the race and also unfortunately got caught up in a bad pit stop. I think Bo Walsto has a decent chance to get a top 10 or top 5. I don't think he's going to be contending for the win. I know he's been good at this track historically, but I don't expect Bo Walsto to be setting the world on fire this weekend. Maybe proves me wrong, but I don't think he will contend for the win, but I think he could have a solid performance this weekend at Martinsville. Up next, how about the 24 car for Hendrick Motorsports? This will once again be driven by William Byron. William Byron is one of the favorites going into this weekend. The 24 team has been really, really fast so far this year. I know they were kind of quiet at Richmond, but we know that the 24 team has been great at Martinsville. I know they kind of struggled the last time we were here, though, but I do believe that William Byron will be a serious threat and contender to potentially get it done, as he'll be looking to become the first driver so far in 2024 to win three races this weekend. Up next, how about the 31 car for Colleg Racing? This will once again be driven by Daniel Hemmerich. Dale Hemrick is off to a very disappointing start in 2024. He has struggled the majority of the year. He's finished outside the top 30 in all but a couple races so far, and there just isn't a pace and speed out of the 31 team currently at the moment. It's a shame because Dale Hemrick, I think, is talented, but he's not had the confidence he needs. And sadly, I don't think Dale Hemrick and the 31 team are going to run good this weekend. Up next, how about the 34 car for Front Row Motorsports? This is once again be driven by Michael McDowell. Michael McDowell had a disaster performance last week at Richmond. In fact, the last couple weeks for his 34 team have not been great. They need to turn the corner really quickly if Michael McDowell is going to be a serious threat to contend for the championship or even the playoffs this year. Luckily for them, he has had some good runs in the past at Martinsville Speedway. Up next, how about the 38 car for Front Row Motorsports? This will once again be driven by Todd Gillen. Todd Gillen's had some pretty good pace to this track in the past and was really good at Richmond last week, but unfortunately the caution coming out at the worst time cost him a shot at a fantastic performance. I do think Todd Gillen will have an okay run. He's won here in the truck series in the past all the way back in 2019, but I don't expect him to contend for the win, but I do certainly think he could have a good performance. We'll see how he ends up doing if he can have a good run this weekend at Martinsville. Up next, how about the 41 car for Stuart Haas Racing? This will once again be driven by Ryan Priest. Ryan Priest has not had the finishes to show for, but they've had some decent qualifying performances. And Ryan Priest has been decent at Martinsville in the past. I do think he's got a chance for a top 10 potentially. He did struggle with Richmond quite a bit, which was really, really surprising. But I certainly do think that Ryan Priest could be somewhat a threat to maybe get a top 15 or top 20. We'll see what he does with the 41 team this weekend at Martinsville. Up next, how about the 42 car for Legacy Motor Club? This will once again be driven by John Hunter Nemechek. John Hunter Nemechek has had a decent start to 2024. He's been around the playoff kind of line a majority of the year. And I will have to say he has scored some decent stage points so far. And John Hunter, of course, won the Xfinity Series race in the race in the spring earlier this year. I think John Hunter Nemechek will have a decent chance at contending maybe for a top 5 or 10, maybe a top 15. Who knows at this point? But I certainly do not expect John Hunter Nemechek to be a threat this weekend at Marsville International Raceway. Up next, how about the 33 car for Legacy Motor Club? This will once again be driven by Eric Jones. Eric Jones is off to a pretty decent start this year. He had a top 15 performance at Richmond, and Eric Jones has been decent at Martinsville. I think he will have a good performance considering Toyota has shown some pace and speed so far in the short tracks, and I think that could lead to Eric Jones having a great run this weekend. We'll see how he ends up doing, and we'll see if he can have a good performance with Legacy Motor Club this weekend at Martinsville International Raceway. Up next, how about the 45 car for Legacy Motor Club? Uh, not Legacy Motor Club, 2311. This will once again be driven by Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick is off to a decent performance so far in 2024, but the finishes have not been there. He's led a lot of laps, but he hasn't been able to close out a lot of these deals. And historically for Tyler Reddick, let's be real, has not gone really well for him. I think he's going to struggle a bit. I think he will be okay at times, but I think he's going to struggle in some instances this weekend. I expect a little bit of struggles, and I don't think he will be a contender or a threat this weekend at Marsville International Raceway. Up next, how about the 47 car for JTG Doherty Racing? This will once again be driven by Ricky Senhouse Jr. 
Ricky Stenhouse Jr. historically at Martinsville, he has not ran great here. And so far in 2024, it's been a little bit of a mediocre performance for the 4017. They've had some good performances, but they also have had some not so good performances. I think Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is going to struggle a little bit this week, and I don't expect him to be a threat or contender. We'll see if he can have a good performance, though, so, and surprise me this weekend at Martinsville International Raceway. Up next, how about the 48 car for Hendrick Motorsports? This is a one scammy driven by Alex Bowman. Alex Bowman is a former winner at Marsville Speedway, and it seems like the 48 team has had the pace recently. While the finishes have not shown for it, he's been running up front a lot more consistently. And I do believe that Alex Bowman could have a good performance, considering Hendrick Motorsports is their 40th anniversary. They'll be looking to get a win this weekend in the 40th anniversary race. I certainly do believe that Alex Bowman has a great chance and opportunity to definitely get that done this weekend at Martinsville. Up next, how about the 51 car for Rick Ware Racing? This is one scammy driven by Justin Haley. Justin Haley has been decent at Martinsville in the past, and Justin Haley has also had a lot more speed than the 51 car has shown in recent years. I know some of the finishes haven't shown for it, but they've had top 10 and top 15 speed at points this year. I think Justin Haley could be a solid underdog pick. I think he's one of the biggest long shots going into weekend. I think Justin Haley could surprise a lot of people and be one of those big long shots who could possibly and shockingly go to victory lane this weekend. Up next, how about the 54 car for Joe Gibbs Racing? This will once again be driven by Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs shockingly had a really disappointing performance this past weekend at Richmond. Luckily for Ty Gibbs, he's been great at Martinsville, especially in the Xfinity Series. And the 54 team has been great at this track as well. This is, of course, the former 18 team. I think the Ty Gibbs will be a solid threat to contend maybe for the victory. I think he will have a top 10 car for sure because the Joe Gibbs cars have been fast. I think the Ty Gibbs will have a great performance this weekend at Mars International Raceway. Up next, how about the 6-6 car for NBA Motorsports? This is the only car right now that has not confirmed who is going to be behind the wheel. Maybe they're going to get someone like a Matt Benedetto, maybe Haley Deegan perhaps. It certainly could be a possibility. Realistically, though, I think it's going to either be Timmy Hill or David Starr, who does, in fact, get behind the wheel. But I think it'd be really cool if someone like a Matt Benedetto got a chance and an opportunity to drive. We'll see who they decide to get behind the wheel this weekend at Martinsville. Up next, how about a 71 car for Spire Motorsports slash Trackhouse? This will once again be driven by Zane Smith. Zane Smith has been off to a very disappointing start in 2024. He is currently 35th in the points and finished 35th yesterday up at um, Richmond. Needs to turn a corner quickly. If he's getting 10 for a playoff spot, things need to change relatively quickly, and they're not doing that at the moment. Hopefully things can get better soon because his performance right now has been very disappointing and mediocre to say the least. Up next, how about the 77 car for Spire Motorsports? This one once again be driven by Carson Hosomar. Carson Hosomar has had good performances at this track, but not great performances. In fact, he's tried to wreck people at this track in the past. I do think that Carson Hosomar couldn't have an okay performance, but I don't expect him to be a major threat or contender for the win. I think he could be a long shot for a great run. We'll see if Carson Hosomar can have a good performance with Spire this weekend. And finally, let's talk about the 99 car for Trackhouse Racing. This, of course, once again will be driven by Daniel Suarez. Daniel Suarez has not been great at Martinsville historically in any series. He's never won here before and has kind of struggled in the past. And this team's been a little mediocre to start off 2024 after they won even at Atlanta. So we'll see if they can turn the corner and have a great performance. I'm not sure if Daniel Suarez will be a threat. We'll see if he can have a good run this weekend at Martinsville International Raceway. So, that is the entry list for the 2024 Cookout 400. One well, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, the notifications on, so if I win a video, it does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support my Patreon as well. Let's go to the and comment your thoughts below on today's video. Who's your early pick to win this weekend at Martinsville? Let me your thoughts in the comments below. Later today, you're going to have the NASCAR Truck Series race picks from Martinsville. Then tomorrow on the channel, we're going to have a NASCAR news video along with the Xfinity Series race picks. And then on Thursday, we're going to have the race picks for Cup along with, the course, the pain scheme video more than likely. And then Friday, we are going to have a NASCAR news video more than likely. In general, got a lot. And the Truck Series race review as well. Got a ton of great content dropping on the channel that I cannot wait for you guys to check out. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode. And I'll see you guys next time for more great awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.